Campus News. I'm Karina Gonzalez. And I'm Caitlin O'Vara. We start with some breaking news. Some scary moments for one sorority after a kitchen fire. But as Summer Vieta shows us, it could have been worse. And as part of homecoming, the University of Nevada, Reno, held its traditional undie run. As Nathaniel Perez reports, students dressed down for a good cause. So you checked it out. How was it? You know, it was awesome, Caitlin. I got the chance to actually try out some of the equipment, and it really feels like you're in a whole new world. It's awesome. That's students awesome. should check it out. The Wolfpack is getting an upgrade to their baseball field. Don Ware talks about his donation to the Nevada baseball team. The gift I'm, I'm, I'm giving is not only to bring, you know, Nevada baseball up to a higher standard with their facilities, but it's also for Coach DJ to, uh, to recruit really good student athletes. Head coach TJ Bruce talks about how this gift will impact the team and future student athletes. The impact on, on Don's gift is, is huge. You know, as we keep evolving in athletics, sports, uh, in this particular instance, baseball, um, it's all about players, and it's all about player development, and it's all about recruiting. Piccoli Park will be finished and ready for the first pitch this upcoming baseball season. Last Tuesday, the university's longest-serving president, Joe Crowley, passed away after being hospitalized with pneumonia since early November. Located in the Joe Crowley Student Union, this memorial has been set up for students and the community to remember Crowley. Pictures of Crowley throughout the years are included, as well as some of his original poetry. Bob Felton, a professor at the university, had a close relationship with Crowley due to their offices being right next to each other. Joe was a presence in, at, at the university. Uh, he was certainly a presence in this little office pod uh, where we would frequently talk. Um, and that presence uh, is gone, and that just simply leaves a big hole um, that uh, will not be filled. Felton also gave Crowley a memorial on his office door where he and colleagues left messages on a sign in remembrance of Crowley. The Greater Nevada Field will be home to downtown Reno's only outdoor ice rink this winter. Caitlin Olvera has more. It's that time of year again, and the Reno Ice Rink is back and better than ever. They've opened their doors this holiday season, and many people are already taking advantage of this season's longer hours. Even though it's chilly outside, there's nothing stopping families from coming. There are quite a few more people. I mean, this is just the opening weekend, and look at all the people already. I mean, it's been packed since they opened up. Let her go around once, then you go around once, okay? Every time you come, you get better and better. The rink has been home to the Greater Nevada Field since 2005, and its popularity has seemed to grow in the past few years. Andre Moise, the Greater Nevada Field brand manager, says the rink really seems to impact the Reno community every season. I think it's something that the whole family can come to, and um, it's also a great way for people to see the ballpark, and of course we love people to come down and see what we do, um, but I think the ice rink kind of stands alone. I think it's just a good thing that we do here for, for everybody. Skaters can enjoy the ice rink seven days a week. It's open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, and it will stay open an extra two hours on Saturday nights. I'm not really the best skater, but as you can see, it's really fun for everyone. Be sure to check it out, guys. Reporting from the Reno Ice Rink, Caitlin Vera, Reynolds School of Journalism. Wait, was that it? Did I just, like... The university now has a space for students to experience the virtual world, the At Reality Lab. Before the opening, university faculty from various departments came together at the Wells Fargo Auditorium to discuss their research involving virtual reality and augmented reality. There are many people who are working on VR projects, uh, mostly researchers and producers, and uh, this is a great opportunity for us to get together, get to know each other's uh, research and, uh, and projects that they are working on. At the event, VR researchers and content creators presented their work in the field. Some of their virtual reality and augmented reality projects will be available at the At Reality Lab. The lab will be open for students to reserve time and space to explore VR and AR mediums. The social aspect of virtual reality is still in the infancy, but if virtual reality technology becomes more available to uh, general public, and that is one of the areas that 
will fastly uh, develop. Luca Starmer is a virtual reality specialist at the At Reality Lab. Starmer learned about VR in the graduate program for the Reynolds School of Journalism. I hope to see VR as a, as a medium that more and more people are creating in and have literacy in. Next semester, VR specialists plan to have a lecture series where students interested in VR can learn more about content creation.